Have you ever wondered how daunting it could be to escape from North Korea, one of the most repressive regimes on the planet? Imagine living in a place where the political climate is so oppressive that the mere thought of dissent is enough to send chills down your spine. That's the reality for the citizens of North Korea, a nation ruled with an iron fist. The government's control over every aspect of life is so pervasive that even the smallest expressions of discontent can lead to severe consequences. The living conditions are nothing short of dire. Many North Koreans grapple with poverty, and basic necessities like food and healthcare are often out of reach. It's a place where the struggle for survival is an everyday reality, and the hope for a better life is a distant dream. Human rights? In North Korea, they're nearly non-existent. Citizens are subjected to arbitrary detention, torture, and public execution. There's no freedom of speech, no freedom of assembly, and certainly no freedom to leave the country. North Koreans are essentially prisoners in their own land, constantly under the watchful eye of the state. Leaving North Korea is a Herculean task. It's not as simple as packing a bag and hopping on a plane. The government has strict laws against emigration, and those caught trying to escape face harsh penalties. The borders are heavily guarded, and North Koreans are rarely allowed to travel abroad. The journey out is fraught with peril. Not only do escapees risk their lives, but they also put their families at risk. The government is known to punish the relatives of those who manage to flee, adding another layer of fear and complexity to the decision to escape. Yet, despite the immense risks and the fear of the unknown, some North Koreans decide to take that perilous leap of faith. They dare to dream of a life beyond the borders of their homeland, a life of freedom and opportunity, but despite these dangers there are some who dare to escape. There are nine known ways, each with its own risks. The first method is crossing the Tumen or Yalu rivers, which border China. These rivers, while not insurmountable, present a daunting and risky obstacle. The Tumen in the east is narrower and shallower, while the Yalu in the west is broader and deeper. However, both are fraught with danger. North Korean patrols are vigilant, constantly on the lookout for defectors. Technology has heightened the risk, with drones now added to the surveillance mix. And then there's the physical challenge of crossing a river. Depending on the season, a defector could face icy waters or strong currents. In winter the Tumen might freeze over, but the ice can be treacherously thin. In the rainy season, both rivers can swell, making them even more perilous to cross. Despite the risks, this is one of the most common escape routes due to its direct path to China. It's a high-stakes gamble, where the prize is freedom, and the penalty can be severe. Once in China, the danger is far from over. The vast country may seem like a haven, but it's a treacherous landscape for North Korean defectors. China does not recognize these brave individuals as refugees, which leaves them vulnerable and unprotected. The fear of being apprehended and sent back to North Korea is a constant burden, a specter that haunts every step they take. China's dense populace and sprawling cities can often feel like a labyrinth, a daunting challenge for those not familiar with its terrain or language. The defectors must exercise utmost caution, blend in, and avoid drawing attention to themselves. It's a precarious game of hide-and-seek, with their lives at stake. Many rely on covert networks of guides and safe houses, often referred to as the modern-day underground railroad, to navigate this perilous journey. But the ultimate goal is not to stay in China. The aim is to reach a third country, usually in Southeast Asia where they can seek asylum. Another option is the long trek to Mongolia. For those who dare to take this path, they must face the wide expanse of the Gobi Desert. This journey is not for the faint-hearted. The Gobi is a ruthless landscape, known for its harsh weather conditions, from searing heat to freezing cold. It's an arid, vast wilderness stretching over a million square miles with little to no signs of life, and the physical challenges are just the beginning. There's the constant fear of being caught and sent back to North Korea. This means every step must be taken with caution, every sound could mean danger, and every shadow could signal the end of the journey. Yet, the allure of freedom is strong, it's a beacon of hope that keeps these brave souls moving. The journey may be perilous, but the reward is worth the risk. Despite the risks, once in Mongolia North Korean refugees are usually flown to South Korea. The sea also offers an escape route. It's a seemingly tranquil path, but it's far from a pleasure cruise. The open ocean is a world of its own, a wilderness that demands respect. For those daring to venture into its depths, the maritime escape is fraught with hazards. 
North Korea's coastline is heavily patrolled, with vigilant eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of unauthorized movement. Evading these patrols is a game of cat and mouse that could end in capture, or worse. The weather too, is an unpredictable adversary. The sea's mood swings from serene to tempestuous in the blink of an eye. Braving these harsh weather conditions is a testament to the human will and the desperation that fuels it. The risk of being caught is ever-present, a constant reminder of the high stakes. Capture could mean imprisonment, or even death. This path is fraught with peril, but it has been used successfully in the past. It's a testament to the indomitable human spirit, the will to seek freedom no matter the cost. Perhaps the most audacious escape route is through the heavily fortified DMZ. That's the demilitarized zone, a no-man's land separating North and South Korea. It's a four-kilometer wide strip, bristling with barbed wire fences, landmines, and watchtowers not to mention the tens of thousands of armed troops on standby, ready to react at the slightest hint of a breach. This is no walk in the park, it's a gauntlet of hazards that demands the courage of a lion and the cunning of a fox. The terrain itself is a challenge with rugged mountains, dense forests and swift rivers. And then, there are the physical barriers. High walls, deep trenches and wide moats, all designed to deter and delay anyone daring enough to try and cross. Yet, despite these overwhelming odds, a few brave souls have made it across. They've dodged bullets, tiptoed through minefields, and scaled walls to reach freedom. This route is almost impossible and extremely dangerous, but a few have made it across. The vast border with Russia also provides an escape route. This path, however, is no walk in the park. The Russian wilderness is a realm of innate hostility, a cold, remote landscape that challenges even the most seasoned survivalist. It's not just the biting winds and the frigid temperatures that pose a threat but also the dense forests and the rugged terrain, each step a testament to the bravery and resilience of those who dare to cross. Yet the physical difficulties are only one side of the coin. The fear of being caught looms heavy on the hearts of the escapees. Russian border guards, often known for their strict enforcement, are a constant risk. If caught, the consequences are dire, often resulting in repatriation to North Korea. This is a less common route due to its remoteness, but it has been used. The sheer audacity of those who attempt this path is a testament to the human spirit's capacity to seek freedom, no matter the odds. The eighth way out is one of the least common, but it happens. Diplomatic defections. Picture this. You're a North Korean diplomat or a family member of one. Living abroad, you're exposed to a world vastly different from the one back home. The contrast can be so striking that it spurs the unthinkable. Defection. Such instances are not unheard of. In the late 80s a North Korean diplomat in Denmark sought asylum in the West. In 2016 London-based diplomat Thay Yong Ho defected with his family, making headlines around the globe. These individuals, already high up in the North Korean hierarchy, risk it all for a chance at freedom, sometimes succeeding, sometimes not. It's important to remember though that these are exceptional cases. The majority of North Koreans do not have the privilege of foreign postings. These defections are rare and usually involve high-ranking individuals. Lastly, and most controversially, are abductions. These are instances when North Koreans find themselves smuggled out of their homeland, not by personal choice but orchestrated by others. Often these are desperate family members who have managed to escape and are determined to bring their loved ones to safety, even if it means against their will. Tales of these abductions are shrouded in secrecy, fear, and a profound sense of urgency. The objective is simple, to liberate those they care about from the oppressive grip of the North Korean regime. However, this method is not without its share of controversies. It raises ethical questions about personal freedom and autonomy. It also brings up significant legal issues, as such actions can be seen as a breach of international law. Therefore, it is generally considered a last resort. Despite the noble intention of reuniting families, the complexity of the situation often leads to more harm than good. This method is fraught with ethical and legal issues and is generally considered a last resort. Each of these nine ways to escape North Korea carries extreme risks. These paths to freedom, whether across perilous rivers through treacherous terrains or braving icy waters, are fraught with danger. They each represent a desperate gamble, where the stakes are as high as they possibly could be, life or death. The journey through China is riddled with the constant fear of being reported to authorities. The long trek to Mongolia, often under harsh weather conditions, can break even the strongest spirits. The maritime escape and defection through the DMZ are nothing short of daring, while the path via Russia is a daunting challenge. 
And let's not forget the diplomatic defections and the last resort, abductions, each with their own peculiar perils. The grim reality is those who get caught face severe punishments or even execution. Yet the fact that people are willing to take these risks, to stake their lives on the slimmest chance of escape, speaks volumes about the conditions in North Korea, 